Hey everyone, I'm Simone with Unlock Your Design. I'm here today with Ashley Nicole and our special guest, Teresa Padilla in our Living the Body series. If you've been following along, you know we are in the cauldron, medicinal foods, Chinese medicine, the I Ching and human design. And today is our series finale. I am so excited about today because in our last episode, um, Teresa talked about the Tao Yin and self-massage that um, is connected to the constellations. So we're going to have a special treat today because she's going to sh talk about and show us the Tao Yin as well as go into um, PHS. So we have an action-packed season finale. <laughs> Teresa Padilla, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. I, you know, I was thinking I wanted to start this, uh, the finale off with gratitude. Mm. So I would like to take a moment uh, for us, everyone to really be filled with gratitude. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I grounded a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited too. So good to be here. And today we're in the 33, um, the gate or hex of retreat um, in the archetypes. It's the medicine woman. So what a perfect day to experience <laughs> Tao Yin, right? Right. <laughs> Everything is aligned for us today. So how would you like to begin today, Teresa? Well, you know, I tra traditionally start with Tao Yin. Um, and I know we had talked about something else. <laughs> But what do you think? Due to everything, go ahead and starting with Diane. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it, it feels right. Uh, if you could, if you could go to that slide that presents just the little background on the Diane. Yeah. Let me share my okay. screen and um, let's see. Screen share. Here we go. Hmm. It's the sixth slide or the seventh, I think, something like that. The next one, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right, so uh, Dao Yin is, I mean, it's very, a lot of things are close to my heart, but, but this, this is so grounding. You know, I haven't experienced anything like this in terms of exercise for the body. I just haven't. There, it's just very different. How I use it, I mean, I do have some movements, full out movements that I do. Today, we're going, going to do sitting, um, posture that's a self massage. And I have used this traditionally to open up. Uh, you know, groups or meetings or uh, Qigong uh, workouts. Um, it does, Dao Yin is traced back to, you know, to what, about 2000 BC. And in that era where they really started putting it to medicinal use, there was a huge flood at that time in that area in China. And all the water courses and waterways were uh, stagnated and blocked. 
And there was a lot of stagnation because that's what they needed that water, the people did, they didn't have the water. So people were, were sick, the bodies were sick, um, you know, so they employed Tao Yin principles to create movement within the body uh, to release the stagnation. And Tao Yin means to guide. So it's principle, it's a principle of peace. You do it peacefully with ryth rhythm in your body. And that's something that's kind of a code of ethics that when you do the Tao Yin is that you practice it in that way. Um, you hold your head up, you know, unless you're doing something where your head needs to be down. Um, you can go a lot into it, but I want to get on to doing the exercise, <laughs> the self massage. So you want to, you're going to get your, uh, possibly makeup and hair messed up a little bit on this one. <laughs> so be willing to go with that ladies <laughs> or men if you've got your hair all fluffed out. Um, you want your feet flat on the floor and kind of open yourself up, stretch. Taking a deep breath. And exhale through the mouth. Now let's rub the palms of our hands together. You're just whisking the hands together. Where they're going all the way up. This is opening up the meridians, mainly the heart meridian. I hope you can see me with all this. Then go up the inside of the arm on the right and down on the left. On the left, and down on the right. And another time, inside first, outside. Inside, and outside. And what you're doing is you're, oh, we're opening up the meridians at this point. And all these meridians are connected with the stars. So Teresa, on this one, it, does it matter if you start on the left arm or the right arm? Uh, if you really want to work on clearing something out, start with the left. Mm -hmm. I'm going to clear out and then move to the right. But you want to do these about three to five times each one. Now, now you're going to the head and uh, with, the, with a soft fist, the thumbs in front of the, the fist, and you knock where it's opposite on the head. Your hands are opposite wherever you knock. <laughs> this actually helps to prevent concussions. If you get in an accident or have a fall or something, really good for elderly people to do to help strengthen the response here. And now you're going to mas massage all over the head by, and once again, opposite. So wherever you're massaging, your hand wants to be opposite. You're kind of grabbing the head and moving it around the scalp. And now you take your fingers and get in there. <laughs> massage that head and this is so good you know if you have a headache anything all these movements from the head are going to clear out any heat in the eyes or the head if you've been on sitting down all day the energy rises up to the head uh, so this clears out tension toxins heat in the head neck eyes openings because you have most of your openings in your head. And if you wear artificial clothing where it's not breathable, then the head, the, all the energy doubly rises to the head more. So there's definitely constriction in this area and it's good to clear it out. Okay, and now you're gonna take your left hand and gently pinch right on the nose, bridge of the nose, 
take the palm of the right hand and move down the, up and down the back of the middle, down the back of your neck, all the way to the back of your neck. And you gently kind of pull out on this area here. And now with the other hand. This right here is taking that energy now that's being released and it's moving it down the spine where it's going to return to the base. And anything that is toxic will just be released. Okay, now you're going to pinch gently around the eyeball, or eyeball <laughs> eyebrows <laughs> all the way. And you're taking the back of the thumbs and you're going at the top, down at the middle, the bridge, I mean, and then down the middle the side of the nose right here. So right between the eyebrows, right between the eyes, and then right in the middle of the nose. This is works with the triple warm, warmer system in the body, helps reset your body to that balance in the magnetic monopole. And now over and under, over and under. And pay attention to where there's tension in the body or where you tense up while you're doing this. And kind of, when you do that, take a deep breath and exhale. And now what you wanna do is you wanna go in reverse on the temples, little circles in reverse. So towards the back of your head. Uh-huh. Okay. And then now towards the front. Okay. And I'm gonna open my door cause it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Definitely have some heat that's moving out. <laughs> if you're getting hot, it's because the heat is moving out of your body. <laughs> Okay, now you're taking this and you're going on this side of the ear where the, the flat end of my hand is right up against this and my thumb is right up against the behind my ear. Okay. So like this, you're embracing your ear with your hand and your thumb. Nice. You're going up like that. And then you move in towards the nose and then back towards right in front of the ears. Do you keep your thumb connected behind the ear? Does it your face? Yeah, yes. Now on the last one, we're gonna move it in the front. Move it in the front and it comes from behind the ears. And kind of like this. And then all the way down. All right. All, all the way down. And now you're putting your hands together like this, fingers, and you're going from the top down to the eyebrows and up. This will balance your whole, all of your meridian systems, this exercise. All right, now we're gonna rub our hands together and blink our eyes at the same time. Blink your eyes while you're rubbing your hands this time. And now you're gonna cover your eyes with your palm and make sure that there's no light in there. This is so good if you have been on the computer all day long. Just this, these set of exercises right now, if you don't have any time to do the rest of them, this is excellent. Okay. <clears throat> and now we're going to, 
you're going to put your hands on your on your thighs and then you're going to look up these are a series of eye exercises so you're going to look up but you're not moving your head you're just moving your eyes you're looking up and you look just a little bit farther than what's comfortable and then you go down the center and you look down you come to your center and look up again go to your center and look down and do this at least three to five times So you want to stretch a little bit farther than what's comfortable for the eye Then return to your center with your gaze. Now you're going to go to the left, look to the left without moving your head and then just a little extra stretch on the end there. And then come a scan across like you're scanning across the room to the other to the right and a little bit extra stretch on the end with that eye. And then scan all the way to the left. And then all the way to the right. And then come back to center. And now you're going on the diagonal. You're going to up, go to the upper left with your eyes. And down through the center to the right, lower right. And to the center. And up to the upper right through the center, down to the left, and to the middle. And now we're gonna turn, have our eyes go all the way around in a circle from the left, make circle, going up all the way around, down all the way around, making a big circle with your eyes. So over the top of your head in a circle. Over the top and then all the way around, like you would be rotating your head, but you're rotating your eyes all the way around in a circle. To the left first and then to the right. And then one more time, blink the eyes and rub your hands. And cover your hand, eyes again. This time, take a deep breath through the nose and exhale as you move your hands off your eyes. And now we're going to massage our ears. Just take the lobes and we're going to go and kind of gently tug and pull on the outside of the ear. The kid, the, the ears are associated with the kidneys. So what we're doing is we're engaging every organ system in this. And do you just go up the back of the ear or do you come around the front when you get to the top? Oh, you just go up and then come down. And then come down, okay. Come and up and down just on the edges. We're just kind of pulling out the edges. And now we're gonna close the flaps with our palms of our hands and then put the fingers on the back of the head. So you're okay. holding your ears forward. And then you're gonna tap on the back of your head while you hold your flaps of your ears down with your palms of your hands. So tap. And then open them up and like that, like you're on an airplane and you're. Now you're taking your pinky, your pinky is associated with your heart. Kidneys and heart are opposite. So we're doing the opposites here. You're gonna put that in your ear this way and then you're gonna turn it up towards the, towards the uh, ceiling and then pull it out. So you're putting it in the ear and rotating it up and pulling it out. Very good. This is really good for ear infections or blockages or tetanitis or anything, lower back pain, really good for that. Now we're gonna go cross our fingers, these fingers and rub them across the bridge of the nose in the middle. 
this if it's really cold outside before you go out you can rub this rub this this point and it helps uh protect your lungs from the cold mm -hmm. there now we're gonna take our index finger one on top one underneath the lips and go and does it matter which which finger is on top uh no because we're gonna switch them okay here in a minute i'll switch okay now we're gonna do um 40 clenching or clacking of the teeth 40 times and during this whole time we did this one exercise one time before this one exercise we're going to do it again um, this one helps create the right amount of digestive enzymes for the body and helps the digestion so during this time you're going to hold your uh, digest your digestive juices and you're not going to swallow during okay. this kind of exercise so 40 times clack clacking Now you're going to take your tongue and go to the left and you're going to massage the gums around the left and then to the right around you still the hold on to the digestive enzymes that you built yeah yep. hold on to mouth. Okay. so five times to the left and then five times to the right and you're massaging the gum with your tongue Now five times to the right, to the left. To the right. We're gonna do the set of four times. No. <laughs> a lot of a lot of just digestive enzymes <laughs> now five times one more time to the left and five times to the right now you're going to take that digestive enzyme and swallow it in thirds so swallow it one time one third then another third And then the last third. Mm. A lot of people, when they get in their later half of life, don't have enough digestive enzymes to support uh, eating. Mm. So it really does help. If you know they have a hard time eating, sometimes they choke a lot because it's too dry, not, a, not, a, not enough digestive enzymes. This really helps to uh, lubricate that digestive system and help keep that functioning correctly. Beautiful. Okay, and now what you're gonna do is you're going to take the back of your neck and you're gonna squeeze it with both hands, one on top of the other and go down the neck and gently squeeze from the base of the neck to the bottom. And now switch hands. And do it again. And now you're going to put your left hand up over your head, right over the crown of the head, palm up, about like a arc, like a moon, half moon. Then you're going to take soft fist. This is what's called a soft fist in martial arts, or then you're going to kind of gently tap in the circle. One way underneath that armpit and then the other way. And then you're gonna open hand it. Now we're gonna go this side, soft fist. 
and open hand it. All right, now we're gonna go up the breast, the little top of the breastbone with the back of the thumbs on each side of it, up and down. Once again, this is kind of, you know, not real soft, but not real hard. You're not pressing real hard on any of this. You're, you're supposed to be peaceful, relaxed <laughs> during all of this. Then you're gonna take the same uh, back of the thumb and go just underneath the clavicle. So le uh, right hand to left or? Mm -hmm. Underneath the clavicle, back and forth. Okay. And now the other side. Left to right. Very good. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, we want the right hand on top and the left hand just underneath the breastbone. And you're going to move. You can see you're going to move the hands like this towards each other. Okay. And you're rubbing circles or small circles. And you want your hand flat on your body as much as you can. So just now we're directly working with the, the warmers here, the burners going down the body. This is really truly an integration of the other episodes we've done because as you're moving us through this, I'm recognizing, well, now she's, you know, the triple warmer. And then we talked about digestion when we did the, the, the teeth clacking. So yeah, it's great. Yeah. Now you're going to switch hands. Go towards there. You rubbing towards the middle first. And if you don't have a lot of time, if you just want to do an exercise, this is a good one to do in this set right here. So then you're going to go on the middle part and you're going to same thing, the one is underneath here. And now this hand switches, the left hand switches to the bottom here. And so we're making circles, right? Mm -hmm. Great. Is it better to stand up or is it okay if we're sitting? Well, it just, you know, it, whatever you want to do, usually it's done uh, sitting or just in one standing posture. Yeah. And then switch hands. Really better if I, you don't have a shirt that's all loosey goosey like my shirt. <laughs> now this is going to open up, uh, you know, this channel. If you have any blockage in the intestines and stuff, it's going to open it up. So now let's do the bottom part here. Put hand here, right here, and then hand here. So this is a lower burner. This you can do for a long time. So good for you. And then switch hands. So now if you are starting to feel any tension in any part of the body, it means that it's getting ready to release. Just keep on going, take a breath. Breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth if you're feeling any kind of tension. And a lot of times you might have it at that point since we've done that and you're moving that intestinal tract. Um, all right, so now I'm gonna move this out a little bit. All right, and what I want you to do is just kind of massage the back like this. One hand on the front and the back of the hand on the back. And does right. it matter? Yeah. Yeah. 
does it matter which one you start with in the front or is it once again we're going to change hands so it doesn't matter here okay great and now opposite hands okay now let's see we're going to go down if you can see this we're going to go down the out of the sides of the body on the sides of the legs and go all the way down and clap and then come back up and then do that on the inside up and down and down and now rub down and then come up okay when we go down you go down on the outside or the outside inside? of the legs uh -huh. and then up on the inside of the legs okay great out on the outside and then up on the inside we're moving working with the gallbladder the liver and gallbladder right now okay and now you can sit down and you're gonna take your foot, your left foot, and kind of put it on your right knee. And then you're gonna take and this right hand and go across the middle of the foot. The bottom middle of the foot. Bottom middle of the foot. Okay. You're gonna rub that. Now we're bringing everything down to the root because the root and the kidneys, everything needs to travel, return to the root. The energy all needs to return to the root. Awesome. Okay. So now you're gonna squeeze it like you're squeezing out, you're gonna squeeze your foot like you're squeezing, wringing it out of a washcloth. Just kind of squeeze, squeeze it out. And then you're gonna take praying mantis little beaker. This is applying lungs to, and this movement right here is lung movement. Okay. Tap the bottom of the foot. Okay. And the bottom of the foot is the kidneys. Now you're gonna take a soft fist and you're gonna soft fist it here. Now you're going to take the both of your hands and you're going to, if you can see this, you're going to go up on the inside and then from the outside in. Okay. Up and down. And now we're going to do the, the right foot. Okay. Left hand diagonal on the bottom of the right foot. Now you're going to wring your foot out. Wring it out of washcloth. Now take your little praying mantis beaker, tap that bottom of that foot. Now soft fist. Okay. And you can have socks on or socks off. If I wasn't prepared, I would have had my socks off. <laughs> Okay, and now we're going to do the leg and go up on the inside of the leg with our hands. And then down on the outside in. And this is what you're doing is you're taking the yin to yang and yang to yin in the liver and gallbladder. So you're bringing what's inside out and bringing what's outside in. Okay, now you're gonna take your knees, both hands on the knees, 
and you're gonna rub them out. This is your stomach and spleen. All the joints are related to your stomach and spleen. So if you have joint pain or uh, rigidity in your joints, then you need more movement in your stomach and spleen. I definitely you have food stagnation if you have rigidity in your joints. So now go on the inside out, opposite direction. Now we're gonna stand up. When you do a good stretch, coming from the floor up through the middle, all the way out to the sun, let that come out, and then just let your hands kind of flop down. And up again. And then just let your hands just kind of flop. And bring your left foot in to meet your right foot. Okay. Bring your left hand in to meet your right hand over your heart. And give thanks, be grateful for this experience. Pay give a moment to pay attention to how your whole body feels right now. Body, mind, and spirit. Namaste. Namaste. What a beautiful practice. I feel so alive. In a way. <laughs> yeah. It's hard not to feel alive with that one, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this powerful, powerful technique, the Tao Yin self massage co connected to all the constellations. Do you, do you want to share more about, uh, you know, I'm not sure um, for people who are watching that we get all of the connection to the constellations, Teresa, but can you, you know, share that connection with us so that we can have an embodied experience of that? There's actually, you know, we're more familiar sometimes with seven chakras. Some people are familiar with 10. Um, there's actually 28 mm -hmm. that are connected with 28 different constellations. I did send, um, I mean, there's a link. It's, you know, more in depth of what I want to get with these, but um, they move through every one of the elements mm -hmm. and the elements work with the five seasonal elements work with the bi binary pair of organs in the body. Okay. And then that binary pair of organs of yin and yang, you know, connects with the sun and moon and they, they connect with all the different planets. And then those connect to the constellations even farther, if you want to break it even farther down. Beautiful. So when you're the center of any um, a practice with martial arts and with this movement, when you another layer to add, when you get fluid with it, doesn't take very much time, you know, and you can start focusing on the center of your hands when you're doing the movement. And that connection will be to the center of the earth and to the center of all the constellations. And you can connect even more so consciously when you're doing the exercise as well. It's so interesting. I was very aware of that during the whole thing. I felt the 
you know, maybe it's because I've done Reiki, I don't, you know, but I was very aware of the center of my palms as we were going through the whole thing. Yeah. And what's really important is, I think, is that in doing any kind of embodiment work is that you are able to release and bring what's inside out and then bring what's outside in. Mm. So that's really important, I think, because otherwise you can build up toxicity even when you're receiving embodiment work. So I'm kind of conscious of what embodiment work I'm going to receive and make sure that it honors that. Mm -hmm. um, because a lot, sometimes what happens with people with rigidity in their muscles is because they're not used to completely stretching that muscle out. They're not used to completely giving of their energy and then receiving back in. They're not used to completely extending the, uh, the release of that and receiving in after you accomplish something. That kind of complete cycle is very important in working with embodiment work. Embody, embodiment work. Mm. And I would choose that over any kind of modality. Any mm. modality that honored that is going to be you know, is going to be good. Mm -hmm. But if it doesn't honor that, then, you know, I'm out. <laughs> Peace mm -hmm. out. <laughs> and as you talked, it was really like the balance of breath, you know, of, you know, can you fully exhale and fully inhale? Can you fully receive, give, and then fully receive or receive and give? Yeah. And there'll be a glow that you have about you as you do these, because it just, it just happens. The light is not uh, inhibited in any way, you know, in, in the body, in the form. Beautiful. I love that we started with this as we then moved into um, PHS and our, our own dynamics, so. Yeah. Um, do you want me to screen share again, Teresa? Or where would you like to go next? Yeah, let's go to, um, I mean, maybe the first, we can just kind of review where we came from real quickly. And then I'd like to get into the motivation with the weaving with the bio clock. Okay, fantastic. So we came from, this is a wonderful picture that uh, Simone drew of the triple warmer system. And this is what we did in that Dao Yin when we were working on the middle part of the body, the upper, middle, and lower warmers, which really control the movement of everything. Um, so important the system is, and it's not, it's not associated with one organ because it's associated with everything. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of like what it's the chakra system that everything moves through to enter into the body and come back out. All right. Okay. Let's see if I can get to the next. Well, let's see. I'm trying to get the then yeah. There then the next I don't know if it was that <laughs> episode. Sorry. Anyway. Okay, this so from, from triple warmer, you want to go to the next slide is this one. Is there a better slide to go? No, that's good. So okay. we then went over the five element generating cycle. You want the mm -hmm. cycle to move naturally. It moves naturally from fire to earth, earth to metal, metal to water, water to liver. And then there's a, a controlling, des destroying cycle that is in that as well. That's, That's awesome. the inner star, correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when things are injured or not in harmony. So ideally we want that outer circle of things to flow and you should be feeling that right now. You should be feeling the harmony right now mm -hmm. and the flow with the elements after doing the Tao Yin. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. next slide. Then 
uh, bringing it home to the medicinal foods that physics is talking about the environment. It determines your food. The physics determines the food. So in, in studying uh, human design, you have your body, your form, which is related to the environment, right? Mm -hmm. So the form, when we receive any kind of frequency or resonance, the form can resonate with it. It has no problem. Our body has no problem resonating with our environment. Immediately when we're in an environment, our body tunes in to that environment. There's nothing wrong with the body. What keeps the, what is the interference is in the mind. Okay, with our motivation, mm. with our mind. Mm. So it's really important to realize that when you're taking in the food uh, that you eat throughout the day, that it's coming from the environment that the food was grown in. It's coming from the environment of what kind of food that is. There's an energetic property. And even though that food might be digested, on a chemistry basis, you're just going to look at that process. On a physics basic, basics, basic, you're going to look at the fact that 70, the other 70%, maybe 30% is the chemistry, and 70% is going to be the environment. What happens after the food is digested? Mm. Okay. So there's a lot that you take in from that environment mm. into the form. So it's important to be mindful with that. And using our mind, our mind is what directs the form, right? Our mind is what directs what we take into our form. And uh, you know, these little thumbs that we have right here give this form the ability to reason. And it's the only form that we have right now that can reason. And so therefore we have the ability to control what goes into our uh, form. And then it be, thus it becomes a little bit of a challenge, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then the next slide. Oh, it might jump to, hold on. Okay. There's a bit of a lag. There we go. Okay, so neutral foods, um, I suggest starting if you have any kind of difficulty in your body or you just want to reset your whole body and system and start from a good slate is to use neutral foods. We went into a whole energetic uh, food list that a lot of neutral foods are round, yellows and oranges, root vegetables are all neutral foods, citrus, things like that. These reset your whole system and they integrate anything and everything. They rule all the transitions that we move through. And I was talking about that nothing bypasses the earth. So it's the fifth, the fifth season. So it integrates all the seasons in the center. Um, and a lot of the Dalian movements, you know, you return to your center, mm. you the movement to the center. So when you go out, you want to come back to your center. You go out, you come back to your center because that's that integration process. At night, you retreat to the earth element between each day, between every season, every cycle. Well, that's really beautiful uh, in the context of the Tao Yin because all, all of the movements were returning us to, you know, going in or going out and, um, you know, being in the, connecting the body with the earth or connecting the body with the um, constellation, the planet, and then back into the body. So there's this beautiful um, fractal that we're working with. As, as you're talking, I'm like, oh, wow, this is the fractal we're working with here. So yeah. many layers. Yeah. And you know, that picture is kind of like that in and out with that picture like your eyes. 
All right, let's go to the next one. Okay, give me just a second. I'm, uh, there we go. Sorry for the. Okay, and then we talked about the constellations with Chinese, your, your own constitution and constellations. So every, um, you have your own constitution. And when you, the minute you take your first breath, you're taking in that prenatal chi um, from your ancestral DNA and also from, you're taking in postnatal chi from your environment. So the two meet and your medulla oblongata come into your form. And thus, you know, the magic begins. And so does the susceptibility. <laughs> the karma begins as well. <laughs> the karma and dharma and your response to your stimuli and so it's good to know your own constitution we're going to go into something here a little bit more that's going to help you know a little bit more of what that is okay and so then we did the dao yin mm -hmm. and then now we're at phs we're at phs with your personality color motivation so this uh you find this when you get a chart with genetic matrix, a foundational chart. Um, and under the motivation, it will give you your, on the personality side, it will give you your color motivation. Uh, so uh, I could take people to, I wish I had it on my printed out version of my um, I could take people there if you feel like it's really important. We could open genetic matrix up and look at it. Or do you feel like we go uh, from right here? Yeah, maybe, you know, I forgot that too. So let's just go with this. Okay, okay trust, great. Trust the universe here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I have three. What do you have? Uh, my motivation is hope. And I'm theist to anti-theist. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, one is fear. Now, all these have binaries. Um, so the, the first motivation, foundational, security, uh, survival, kind of where we all come from, right? Mm -hmm. Starting from our fear. And then the two different binaries that we travel back and forth between and this is where i was talking about with your personality color motivation this is that you know you've got the body form we're not talking about that here we're talking about the mind mm -hmm. and your personality when i taught metaphysics for years and i was in that environment for a long time with people that uh very disciplined with their mind and their bodies and um for years i was teaching that and in that environment when i left that there was a whole you know it was like everybody's personalities were talking to me <laughs> because i wasn't in a group dynamic that was really consciously using their mind correctly in their body. Mm. And so what I received when I left was almost like a wave of, you know, people talking like they were acting is what it felt like to me. Mm like people were acting. And that was when I was really uh, consciously aware of the subtle veil that we put on, that we become sometimes so entrenched in that we don't even know it's there. Mm. So, doing your own work to really come home with what your motivation really means to you, I think is important. Um, and it'll travel 
with the mind from like the fear will travel from the separatist to the and chime in you know uh simone because i know that you have a lot of knowledge with this wisdom i'm leading this up to the bio clock is where i'm going with it so that's where i'm weaving what i'm giving right now but definitely open to what you have well you know for me when i came to uh human design jinkies and human design um i'm hope um, my trajectory is theist to anti-theist um you know souls are no joke um i was born um i chose to be incarnated in this life into a family that was catholic very catholic um my my grandparents um my grandfather helped build the church on the side of the river so that people uh, I who lived out in the country could actually have a church to go to. Wow. And he was a proponent of Catholic education and he worked his whole life to build a school so that children could be indoctrinated into Catholicism, right? So I grow with, you know, my, my grandparents I, who I lived with when I was young, they had um basically a small church in their home you know that they prayed the rosary that you know so i went to this very theist um into you know i chose to incarnate into a very theist family i mean i used to go to church every day and um the trajectory of my life has been anti-theist and i'm actually really aware of the moment of my awakening and it was actually on an easter sunday when um we lived in texas and um i had taken my boys to church on easter sunday and it happened to be the first day that the church was open and um i was sitting there my my kids my boys were on the front pew they wanted to sit in the front so they could see and I was noticing the design of the church and how it was designed so that you could hardly see the altar but um there was a little girl who was probably eight or nine and she was one of the altar attendants that day and when it came time to read from the gospel she was standing like a podium and she had this big huge bible that was huge I mean it was like this thick and she was holding her arms up like and holding the Bible. And I was like, wow, she's reached the pinnacle of her position in this religion. And um, that was my day. <laughs> that was it. I was like, <laughs> and then, and thus began my path to, you know, from theist to anti theist. And, you know, hope as my color. Um, uh, is you know i'm always hopeful i'm always um you know the, the classic definition is um it's an, a gift and awareness to know that something is coming and that you know that um you know you may prepare for the things that can't be prepared for and that you have glimpses of the future and um You know, our for those of us with hope, we bring hope uh, to others in life, and we sustain and raise the spirit of others by being hopeful. And we uh, can sit by the river and enjoy life and wait for things to show up. And you know, it's especially beautiful because I'm a right angle cross, cross of consciousness floor, and I'm supposed to lift my paddle and just be in the flow. You know, lay in the bottom of the canoe and let the flow take me, or sit with my motivation and my transferred uh, motivation is guilt and um you know uh it's also trying to solve guilt is trying to solve things and i have had really powerful experiences with my sons and um we're close because of it and and that is that we have a real clear communication that they don't call me to uh, for me to solve everything. So when I'm in my transferred motivation, they call and I want to fix the problem. Yeah. And that's when I'm in guilt. Whereas if I just stay in hope, I listen to them and I know that, you know, it's all going to work out. It's already <laughs> dis discerned, decided, you know, I just hold the space of love for them. So, um, 
you know, we've actually talked about that and uh, it makes it so easy for us to be clear with each other because if they want, if they would like my magic or my wisdom, they actually just say it. I'm calling because I'd like for you to share your wisdom with me. That's great. Right. And so the, the, if they're not saying that, then I can just remain in hope that it's all going to work out. And I can remind <laughs> them how amazing they are, and what strengths they have so that they know that it can um, work out. And, you know, I feel like that even goes into my design further because I'm a projector. And so success is a theme. And so I, you know, I love it when people succeed and I always hope that they will yeah and that's when i'm my most happiest you know my most joyful so you know if you're i'm sure you know if you're if you've been with us on unlock your design before you you know that um we've been bridging these gaps and talking about these things we haven't talked about um motivation in a while but um you you know it's worth the the study, I feel. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So then, oh. Oh. I so hope you go into the desire. Now, I want to get into the bio clock, but mm -hmm. each one of these are different motivations and they have binary. Uh, leader, follower, like you said, the trajectory from the leader to the follower uh, later on in my life. For need, binary, master to the novice, mm -hmm. and guilt, binary conditioned conditioner and six innocence observed and observer mm -hmm. let's bring bella in because this yeah. is bella's genius and oh, see her good i would love for her to jump in with us right now hey bella welcome and thanks for coming in thank you yeah i i just felt because i have the same as you simone and i i felt there was a few things that i could add to what yeah. you said and that is because we are looking at the personality side, we're looking at the mind, and then we have this um, we have this term called transference. And knowing that when things are filtered by the mind, the mind is the mind works like that. So it's often like to transfer things to what they are not. So knowing, so if I have hope and my transference is guilt, the way that my mind often sees things is in that transference. And it's not to fix anything or to make myself wrong when I feel like I have to fix everything, but it's an awareness of how the mind transfers things, whether you're innocent and you transfer to desire or need and fear. So I feel like that is something important. And then what I would like to say about this one, hope, I like I like the word word hope, but for the second color, for me, inspiration is important. Like we are, and I can see that in you too, Simone. You know, it's about being here and being so natural and in ease with life, so that you inspire people. Because especially if people are stuck in the lower shadow frequencies, they can't help but, but being like sparked by that ease, and it's inspiring. And we, as second colors, we don't already we don't many times know why but it just feels like we are, we are kind of going through life with that natural and ease, which again, I want everybody to remember, we're speaking about hexagram structure. So even when we're speaking about the colors, we have those six colors and the, the basic qualities are the same. So when you were speaking about the first uh, color, the fear, it's very much like a first line, it's that foundational, it's making sure, does it work, does it not work? The second line is that naturalness and ease. The third line is that fire and desire, you know, that we have from the solar plexus, the third chakra. And then the fourth is need, and it's looking much out to others, like what's needed here? What's in this situation? You know, kind of feeling people with the heart. And then the guilt is that fifth line of, of, of fixing, of finding practical solutions. And the sixth line is the innocence, it's transcending all the other numbers, all the other uh, parts of the hexagram. So I, I would like, yeah, you know, kind of bring it back to those two things. If you don't know anything about motivation or about, you know, when we go out, this is just one decimal out from the line. Think about it in hexagram structure and understand that there is those uh, inherent qualities in the hexagram. And also don't make yourself wrong for going to the, to the transference because that's how the mind works. So especially, you know, for me and Simone, we are four sixes. 
So we're going to want resolution forever. The sixth line always wants that. So we kind of, it's, it's beautiful to watch it and then know that when I'm in my naturalness and people seem to be inspired around me, I know that there is something where my awareness, my mind is not trying to get, to, to take me anywhere, but I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm coming into relaxing into the form, form principle, trusting my body as it naturally moves through life. Mm -hmm. um, so I would want to bring in the awareness aspect when it comes to color, because this is beyond strategy and authority. And it comes when we can kind of sit back, you know, and, and be observers. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I would add in. And I saw, you know, Tanmaya, you are on, on camera. So I don't, you know, I haven't seen you for a while. And I know that you're also into human design. So I would love to, you know, have you just something into the circle. You're still muted, I think. All right. <laughs> no, I'm kind of, I'm kind of having a little giggle to myself that I just landed here with you. It came into my inbox and I thought, oh, I'm going to just click on and see what's happening. I don't know a whole lot um, about this. I, I'm desi Mine is desire. Um, it's not something I really ever dived into other than listening to Ra. So I don't know a lot about it, except that I mean, when I see leader follower and in, in, in innocence observed, I was very aware that innocence was the transference. And at the same time, in other um, models of the world that I've played in, um, innocence is a core. So I thought, isn't this fascinating? So in one model, I have innocence as, as a core and another model, I have the opposite. The thing that... Um, I don't know if I'm just going to blurt. Okay, I'm just going to let my 4323 <laughs> blurt. Um, when I the desire aspect for me, um, it comes up in in, in special ways. Like uh, I always <laughs> in years gone by, I always knew when I was really hot for something that I really wanted to create. I would buy red shoes. <laughs> you know, that is such a, to me, that's that third line aspect of it. It's like I would find myself looking for red shoes. And it was almost like to, I when, when I look at it, I feel like I wanted to ground that moving red, um, passionate, changing energy onto the floor of the planet, you know, because I'm also, I'm a 6'2". So there was something about, very symbolic about those um, red shoes. And I can go through years of not, of not recognizing any kind of outer desire. And I've lived a lot of them, as many of you have probably heard me say. So it's not like I'm lacking in anything. But things turn up like, years ago that the very first it was called a think pad it was a black computer and i've only ever had laptops i've never had a desktop in my life i used to have these great long strings of telephone cord that went around my house and out to the balcony so i could use move this thing about and i just i remember seeing it and it was like a child you know that third line that's like the magpie that collects you know Gl glittery things and things that are just divinely delightful and I was like I have to have one and it was like I remember the man in my life looking at me like you know I think my eyes must have gone big or something I had to have it immediately but the desire on a deeper level um I feel like I don't really know what in some way it's like it's it's like these days it's more, um, it's the desire that comes from, you know, some, some idea that's percolating or something that I really want to create. And I notice that like the third line does how, and what, I mean, I'm only sharing in my universe how I relate to this. There's no, nothing concrete here. Uh, and I find that I, it's very easy for me to get caught on the how. 
Mm. You know, if, if I feel like I don't know how I'm going to do that, but there's a burning desire to just do it. So my so often I will just create the structure of whatever that is and market it. And then I know that the guidance then takes over and that the desire to to provide, produce, play that whatever that changeable experience is. I don't know if that makes any sense to what you guys have been talking about. I love it. I love it because um, it, when you follow your desire, everything unlocks. It's like the, the universe conspires. Oh, she's in her desire. Let's just, uh, the how will open up. You just stay in your heart of desire and the rest follows suit. Thanks. Yeah, it was beautiful example, Tenmaya. Thank you. Do you have anything to add there, Bella, seeing as you asked me? You know, I did have just a, like an inquiry thinking. Mm -hmm. So for me, too, I am a 4'6", and I don't have a lot of second lines. And I mean, this is just an inquiry. So I wonder if we could play with wherever we have that line. Because we're speaking about color, so it's not line. But where, if you are a third color desire I wonder how that kind of marry or play with if you have other third lines in your chart like if you have third lines in your chart I wonder if that is a doorway maybe to kind of play with play with this awareness and and I know I know that I have in my normal gene key profile I don't have any second lines but if we add those next planets in the harmony sequence I do have a few of them and and I feel like the 16 to, for example, there is some kind of, there, there's something there with the color together with wherever we have that line in the profile. I feel like that's maybe how we can have a little bit more of a graspable quality. So if there is any third line in your chart, how does that marry with that color of, of desire? That's just what kind of came up for me. No, again, like you are saying, I don't have any, there is nothing there's nothing tangible in this, but that's what, what's made me curious as I listen to you. I have quite a few third lines. I mean, in the, um, well, it's the core, in Venus, it's the core wound. Sorry, I'm, I'm not in design at the moment. My head's in jinkies. So design Mars, and we are more jinkies right. as well. So I think everybody oh, knows okay. the core. <laughs> yeah. On the core yeah. So, yeah, so yeah, the core wound, 13th jinky. So I have it a few times in the charts, also the brand. So there's a third line there. And I, God, I can't remember where there is other third lines. I have a few in my human design in the moment. I can't think of anything else. But that's the one that stands stands out as the, you know, the vocation, mm -hmm. which you're familiar with, with your 13s, Bella. Yeah, I, I feel like if there are people on the call too or watching this after, they feel like it's a little bit ungraspable. Maybe that could just be one way in to look, where do you have that line that is the same number as the color? And is there anything there that is, that is a parallel that can tell you something of the quality of that specific color slash line? Yeah, it's really curious because it's like, even although I know that this is color, it's still... You know, when when I see it put there as that third color, it still has that changeable nature for me. There's some aspect of it as the Trinity, you know, the and the somehow it's you know, it's a bit like it's an adapt, it's still it still feels adaptive. And I feel that in my body, not so much as a, you know, not as much as a thinking about it. It's like you know, it's like, yeah, like the red shoes, what to say. That's what I was thinking of when you were talking about your red shoes. I was like, that's so line three. Yes. <laughs> crazy thing. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for asking. And I can see the places where I hit, where I have hidden in the innocence just to, to open up that gate to where, um, I can see that places of standing back and observing that, that six line function also, you know, 
as an observer, not really getting engaged, not being really honest about my desire. You know, I can really see that as a as a big piece in, in my life. In fact, something something came up recently around desire, and I find myself um, stating my needs, and it was kind of shocking to my body in a way. You know, it was like, wow, you really put that out there. So it, it shows me yet again that regardless of what stage of life I'm in, you know, these ancestral codes are constantly actually asking to be revealed and situations again and again that appear to be so simple, you know, just a simple question or an acknowledgement of something can absolutely trigger these ancestral patterns. And I was watching my body just go into this, um, I don't know, have words for it, just, just deep anxiety of having been so ex exposed as far as the pattern was concerned. You know, as a witness, I was fine. It was like, well, that's my experience of this. But to, it's like, I find it's that pushing, pushing through sometimes the construct, you know, like the, the truth of the, the reality of the being is present, but the construct is going, oh my God, you really said that out loud, you know, it's still trying to work its way through and integrate. Mm -hmm. Thanks. That would be the last thing that I say about this, which goes to back to the to the transference. Like I, I like the, the term you used. How are you hiding in that? Because I know, and I even have examples from this very week, how I have been hiding in the in my transference, which is the guilt or the fixing. I always fix and I have open emotional center uh, and open ego. So I always want to fix. I want everybody to be happy, everything to be beautiful. And Often I overextend myself with the 38 and the 28. I go to the last drop of blood and I want everybody to be happy. And that is very much the transference. But I've been hid, hiding in that because I feel like it, the life, life seems easier if everybody's happy. So I feel like that's a, like that term that you use. How are you hiding in the transference? I think that's also an inquiry. It can be super powerful. Um, yeah, and I can see Ashley's on the call too. She has fear and her transference is need. And sometimes for her, it's like just four kids. It's all about like, what the, what do the kids need? What do the kids need? But it's not kind of coming back into the center of herself, of her foundation, and like feeling like what works here? What doesn't work? That, that first color that's very individual in a way and very foundational. So, and maybe also kind of being caught up in that, you know, hiding her true self, hiding that, very empowered first color by just doing everything that she feels that she needs in in her family so that's something you know that's just an example actually I don't know if that's exactly what it is for you but I can see that combination you know because now we have take now we spoke about the two and the five with me and Simone we spoke, spoke about the three and the six with you Tanmayo and then Ashley would be the one and the four and there we have kind of have all the different combinations that that one is the transference and one is the motivation thank you so much bella for taking us on this this particular journey and fleshing that out so beautifully and so clearly and thank you ten ten mayo for having courageously sharing um for everyone beautiful so now teresa you were gonna <laughs> weave, weave, weave it into the bio clock with the traditional Chinese medicine. And so we're going to go to the next slide, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so each one of those paired organs relate to the paired organs in the body. Each one of the, the color motivations that we're talking about relate to the, the paired organs in the body. And every four hours, we resonate with harmony in our body and our mind. Over a 24 hour period, we've got at least four hours where we are in perfect harmony with our motivation, yeah. divine resonance with our body. And then the other 20, we're open to influence through that transference with, with others. So, 
in the body, this is the bio clock that's related to a day in a 24 hour day in traditional Chinese medicine. And let's say the, the time I was born was five, is five, was 511 AM. Mm -hmm. So if we go to 511 AM on here, uh, it's the lung and large intestine system. Mm -hmm. So those paired organs, the lung and large intestine are paired with each other. So they're both purple. The stomach and spleen are both paired with each other. They're yin and yang to each other. They're a match made in heaven and on earth. And then we have heart and small intestine paired with each other. We have bladder and kidney paired with each other. Pericardium and triple warmer paired with each other. Gallbladder and liver paired with each other. So my dominant organ system is lung and large intestine because that's when I was born. The, my weakest is gonna be the opposite of, uh, opposite, of, opposite of that, which is bladder and kidney or the water. <coughs> so during a time of day where my divine time of day is like 3 a.m. to 7 a.m. for me. And it makes sense because I'm a, I remember my dreams. I have a very big connection with the collective uh, when I'm dreaming. And I work things out karmically and dharmically when I'm dreaming. And also, you know, for myself. And that is a time when I'm just, I'm very harmonious and I'm very awake and I'm very aware during that time. So where I have problems, if I have low back pain, my kidneys, <laughs> if I start really working too hard at what I'm doing and I just can't let go of it because I have the open spleen uh, center in my, uh, you know, my human design, I have problems with my kidney and bladder and you know, the fear is associated with that kidney and bladder. So we've got paired organs that are associated with our co color motivation as well. And this will help you to find, like if you want to do a, set something into motion, each one of those organ systems have resonance with certain things like the lung and large intestine has to do with your breathing has to do with your dreams and memory call has to do with your detox of your lungs has to do with releasing with the intestines and releasing in general and waking up being able to wake up uh, the lung and the large and the lung specifically related to the metal element is the first exposure to our environment. In martial arts and medicinal medicine, it is the first movement out. Some doctors say, you know, the, the wood is, but really the lungs is the first exposure. It's the first, the first breath, you know, that we take with the lungs <clears throat> when the movement begins. So this is a waking up. If you don't feel like waking up at this time, then there's something to resolve in this area. Moving on to the stomach and spleen. Um, this is a time between seven and 11. So if you're not hungry at this time in the morning, because maybe you have a whole different way of life, you know, and you're not used to eating first thing in the morning. There still is something to be resolved with the stomach and spleen because when the sun is up and it's our ruling planet, there the body wants to take in nourishment, wants to digest it. So this is a time primarily when that digestion can occur. So you will have your most clear thinking at this time. You can have the most clear thinking. Um, the spleen converts the food to the chi and also it helps with the blood. The 
you know, the spleen is the controls really resolves, not controls the waterways, but the spleen resolves the water and the dampness in the body. So if you have any kind of uh, weight gain, if you have any kind of joint pain, it's going to be because of the spleen has dampness in the spleen. And way that you can resolve it is during this time, you can eat foods that are very harmonious to the spleen and stomach. So that would be warmer foods that help, that are easily digestible, you know, no, nothing pro overly processed or processed. Uh, soups are great. Um, butternut squash is great. Round food is great. Root vegetables is great. Uh, red date tea is really good. One of the best for the spleen, red dates are. So, um, Taking a walk during this time after you eat is excellent in getting that stomach and spleen movement moving. And not, not like a rigorous, just a meandering, very balanced, nice walk is excellent during this time. Moving into the heart and small intestine between 11 and three is, the, is that time. And this is the time of the fire, you know, um, desire, you know, you know, related to the color motivation. Um, also, when you, you can relate those to that, and you can also relate it to what time of day you were born in, that would be the most dominant, as far as what time you're most in harm harmony with. And the rest of the time, you're going to, you're going to be trusting that you're going to be susceptible to color transference during that time. So do as much during the times that you're in harmony to really develop strength. That's the best time in medicinal, uh, uh, working medicinally is you use the time that you have that are in harmony to build the rest of the times where you're not in harmony. And it helps you to have that connection more it's not that we need to change, you know, our transference or the way that our mind works or our body or that we're going to. But what, what we can change is our awareness, our connection to it, our consciousness with it. And that's what can change. And when you layer these uh, one with the other, what occurs is that you have more connection you can bring that into that moment where the connection with the outer and the inner and everything is experienced at that time. So with a, during this time, it's an excellent time to eat lunch. You do have high energy. You don't necessarily want to do that right at noon when it's the exact peak of you know, the sun, but uh, taking in some food because you have some warmth, you have digestion available to, to take in. The small intestine absorbs the rest of uh, the food and what happens and it helps move it down. A lot of times people will get blockage here, that's what I've noticed. And if you have any kind of inharmony that occurs with the emotions, a lot of times it will affect the small intestine um, is what I've seen. Mm. And thus the blockage begins. So sometimes there's a large pain like right you know, below here following that small intestine, there's a pain there, it's, it gets constricted. And in a lot of people it can stay constricted quite a bit. So Working with uh, doing, coming from your heart at that time, um, eating foods that are bitter at that time will aid a lot. Eating cooked greens will aid. Pine nuts, um, pomegranate, you know, juice is excellent. Pears are really good for the heart. And especially in the summer in the Northern hemisphere. The bladder, from three to seven, we have bladder and kidney. So this is the water. This is the salty taste. This is where we, our energy gets stored, our chi gets stored. 
And actually in winter is one of my favorite seasons because it's opportunity that we have to build our reserve bank for the whole rest of the year. So it's an opportunity for you to eat the foods that are really good and nourishing for the kidneys and the bladder and for the rest of the organs to help nourish and come out of the den, you know, coming out of hibernation into spring with such nourishment and alignment. It's, it's a good opportunity. You store all those nutrients during that time. You store all the energy during the time. You build that bone marrow. Um, so it's, you really want to eat your last meal before sunset, <laughs> ideally, because light is what helps to psychologically break things down. So if you have an inharmony in your emotions, oftentimes it will be because you're eating at the wrong time of day. So you're not able to really use that time to store the energy, to store the nutrients, to build that bone marrow inside. So if you want to eat here, eat a light, something light, you know, with a light, not real heavy. Then between seven and 11, pericardium and triple warmer. So this is the protection. Um, if you feel like you need protection, if you feel like you're not safe, if you feel um, like you can't give your attention to the moment or to somebody that you're with, a lot of times that will manifest uh, with this, this, these organ systems because you don't feel safe. So you're not going to be grounded in the body because you don't feel safe. So um, this is fire foods as well for this. Um, so, you know, bok choy is so underrated, I think, but so good for you in helping to build that kind of protection in uh, yourself and helping to relieve any kind of anxiety that you might have or anxious energy. So see if you have this builds into one another, if you've had like from three to seven, you had a really big meal and you didn't really store that energy inside in the bladder and store the nutrients, then it's not gonna be stored. It's not going to be you know, grounded in the root. And so this can lead to all different kinds of mental illnesses over time of misusing the energy. Um, endocrine system is, works with this in metabolism, balance. You should by this time, naturally the body, naturally the form is getting sleepy. You know, that doesn't mean the mind <laughs> is, but naturally the form is starting to, to, is starting to go in. Uh, so then from 11 till three, we have our liver and gallbladder. And this is the sleep. We have sleep and then deep sleep. And the gallbladder works with that first part of our sleep cycle. And um, it is what helps with the cell, cellular repair, builds those blood, cessel, blood cells. So if we're not really sleeping at this time, we're not taking advantage of that that's dominant during the time and that's naturally functioning during that time. Um, and then deep sleep between one and three. Um, so see if you have, uh, maybe you ate a really big meal at noon, okay? And maybe you didn't eat any breakfast between seven and 11. And then you were doing work in, from three to seven which is a good time to do work from three to five, but more time to kind of kind of catch up on things and uh, take care of details and kind of resolve or start to complete the work for the day so that you can really store during that time. If you haven't done those things, then it kind of builds up towards the end of the day and then maybe you, won't, you can't sleep at night. 
A lot of people have a problem. They don't know why they can't sleep at night. This is a building process. It can be a building in the direction of the generation cycle for us. And it can be a building in the, in the other way as well, or building up <laughs> where it doesn't really get expressed completely. And like we were taught, we did the Dao Yin prior. Some of you just came in on this. We did do a Dao Yin exercise prior. And I urge you to look at that later and uh, practice that because it helps open up this, all of these organ systems. Uh, naturally. And it's a, once you get the exercise down, it takes about, you know, 15 minutes to do. So it's an excellent exercise to do that helps to harmonize all of these organs. Teresa, um, people are asking in the chat, how does this um, bio clock relate to the motivation and color? Is there a direct tie between, let's say, uh, for example, Tanya um, in the chat was born at um, 5.20 a.m. So kind of close to you over in the large intestine area. Mm -hmm. How, does that, is there a direct tie then to one of the motivations? Um, I mean, you're going to be able to find uh, that's some of the work that I'm starting to do right now is because, you know, I've been working with PHS for, you know, about two, three years now, working with you guys and then working with the medicinal foods for about 20 years. Mm -hmm. So all of this is starting to come out right now of how there is a relationship between the paired organs and the color motivation. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, like the fear if you are fear motivated, one, one relationship you can have, if you have that fear motivation, it's going to relate to the kidney and the bladder, okay? So uh, if you were born at between three and seven, wonderful, because then you have a perfect opportunity to really work and layer that color motivation with those organ systems and with your divine harmony with your body and your mind to really build that connection and that awareness to help you with the other times so that when the, the personality is talking and you don't know what it's talking about and you don't know how it's informing the body or informing your life then you have that connection that's kind of connecting through the veils that forms a clarity over time. Mm -hmm. um, say the, the two motivation of hope and um, you know, hope works with, it can work with liver and gallbladder because that's where we plan. That's where we dream. That's where uh, we have dreams and sleep at night as well. We begin that process. Uh, but it is the process of beginning to visualize our dreams. So that relates very much to the hope. The three, uh, and it's funny that, not funny, but uh, Tenmaya was talking about the desire in relationship to, and the fire in relationship to the, to the desire with that third motivation. Um, and that's related to the heart and small intestine systems. So uh, the fire element is the only one that has the ability to transform itself. So it makes sense with the desire to feel that fire um, because there's a connection there. And the opposite of the, of the heart on here in small intestines you see is the liver and gallbladder. So that desire fuels and kind of feeds the transformation of the fire. Um, the, I'm not looking at that, but the next one, the need with the fourth color motivation, our real need in our body has to do with our core and our center, which relates to the stomach and spleen. So the need there is to be connected to our core. And then that forms integration with everything else. So, and that forms also the clear thinking and the uh, movement 
you know, because the stomach's always churning, it's always moving. So if you have a lot of worry in your life, um, and what's the opposite of the four, the transference? Uh, one. One, the fear. Mm -hmm. So fear, you have a lot of worry can lead to fear as well, because you're not in relationship to this, you're not fulfilling those needs in the earth to the core with the stomach and spleen, which is your center. So then with the bladder and kidney, we have, uh, I'm just gonna look on that. We have, the, we have the guilt next and the innocence is kind of like a transitional, which is gonna work with the triple warmer because that's not related to one organ, it's related to the whole system. So we've got the guilt. You have kidney stones that form in the body uh, and you hold on to things in the bladder and don't let them move through and release. And that's very much related to guilt motivation. So when the opposite of that, the lung and large intestine, we have that in relationship to the fear. So you see how those are working together now. And then with the triple burner and the pericardium, we have uh, the essence of the fire. That's my grandson, if you can hear him. <laughs> Still on a call here. Um, so the triple burner and the pericardium are working together. And with that six, the innocence, they help you to transcend into the next. It creates that spiral of movement of going up and down. It's working with a magnetic monopole uh, with that triple burner. So you're talking the spiral is very much moving into that. And you know, the innocence to me, it's kind of like watching that whole movement take place. It's the observer and the observed. So you're watching <laughs> the magnificence of the spiral going in and out of that transcendence of the movement of all, all of the uh, all of the organs and all of the elements. Beautiful. Um, Bella, Bella, if you can jump back in um, and be live with us, it would be great. I want to um, voice what you wrote in the chat, which was that she, Bella wrote that she loved this and she was talking about how Ra spoke about it. Thanks for joining back on camera, Bella. Do you wanna um, share that with everyone so we can get this on video? I mean, I, I believe it's part of the holistic analysis that he did more towards the end. And, you know, he was even speaking and I've heard Richard speak about something similar when it comes to like using plants, for example, they they were speaking. I mean, I think that they, they maybe came from something. This is just me guessing that they had spoken about when they were still working together, because they were both speaking about those centers, kind of centers of awareness. Richard has been speaking about it as you know a sequence where you would use different things to unlock, you know, and it would be different for each pe person depending on you know those cycles, those things that are that are unique to us. And Raw in, in this course, this advanced course that I was listening to, he was speaking about uh, the color, especially about, I believe it was the design moon, which is funny because that's the attraction in, in, in the Gene Keys. And really about those like narrow windows of treating people because you want to treat people with a bio clock, bio clock or biorhythm and that the receptiveness would be kind of in, in those tides like the moon. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, and he had a fourth line. I think it's actually, he connected it more to PHS than to motivation, but you know, similar similar thing of, of those, um, yeah, of those like um, times on, on the 24 hour clock where we would be receptive. Um, I would love to go deeper. I think there's one person in, there's one person in, um, an older now he's a little bit older he's in Germany and he was the he has been teaching um, 
Can you hear me? Yeah, she has been taking holistic analysis and he is you know, going into these things. Um, I can't remember his name. He has a, uh, he has a website in, in German, but I don't know many people who like continue that. Uh, and even with the gene keys, I think, you know, we were speaking last year about this thing with the gene keys of the sequences, the health sequence, I think Richard called it, of going deeper and kind of going in with the core wound and Chiron, like, you know, the asteroids even. So I believe that there's much more to discover. And I feel like what you are doing, Teresa, with us right now, it's part of that inquiry um, where the body is a portal. And we knew that like, even from the beginning with Ra, we know the form principle that the seven first year is really about coming deeper into the body, become more natural in our body, show up more, like feeling better in our skin is probably what he would say. And then the awareness can come, can come but it doesn't come while you feel super uneasy in your body and it doesn't feel like it's your friend, like when you haven't accepted the form principle, basically. Um, but I can, I can see if I can find anything on it, if I can remember exactly what it, what, what, where it was I found it. I think, I think it was in some audios, holist, advanced holistic analysis or something. Uh, but I don't have more precise on that, Simone, but it's just a confirmation of what, what I feel is true. And I think that I would love us to have those centers with human design and genius that is an experimentation because everything that has to do with color and tone, it's so much an experimentation. Nobody can tell you this is right. You know, only eat this time or don't eat this time. Like I know for a fact that I go to bed later than I probably should in order to allow that cycle from three from 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. I know for a fact that that's happening. Uh, and at the same time, I do think that we have individual differences in how our, you know, a little bit how our biorhythm can work. And some of it can be conditioning, some of it can be bad habits, and some things are also uniquely different, different from, from person to person, which PHS would, would actually confirm. So that's what I have, two cents, you know, Simone. So yeah, I don't have anything else. No, I love it. I mean, it, it helps you know, I love the, you know, I love the inquiry process and your questions are weaving into my questions as I listen to Teresa and I'm sure maybe everybody else's questions or, or um, awarenesses. So um, what I love is that we have this ancient system of Chinese medicine that is tying into the cosmos through um, human design and gene keys, which, you know, we started today with the Tao Yin. We were literally connecting our bodies in and out, receiving and giving and connecting our body to earth and to the very heart of, of the planets and the constellations. So then to be here with the biorhythms and to be weaving it all together, is so, so powerful and we have so much room, you know, there's so, there's so many places we can go. So Teresa, what's, um, is it time to advance the slide now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My, um, my That's computer. That's really what I have for <laughs> today. So if you've been loving, loving, loving the series, the Living the Body 2 series, um, well, First off, thank you so much for joining us. And um, if you would like to, I know I'm working with Teresa um, through Unlock Your Design and Bella's genius of always reaching out to collaborators to continually um, bring depth to um, everything we do at Unlock Your Design. We met Teresa. And we listened to her and she became a part of our portals of deconditioning, um, which is um, a year through the wheel. We're in our second um, year of going through the wheel together. And Teresa brought medicinal foods to portals of deconditioning. And I heard her, was with her on the, our beginning calls and then she joined. And after she did her first presentation and portals of deconditioning, I was so moved and I started working with her personally and have just been blown away by um, food as medicine. And uh, we've been, we, you know, from that, we, this, uh, 
her work with us through portals of deconditioning this living the body series too um birthed and um so we're so grateful for Teresa's wisdom Teresa studied the I Ching for 20 years she has two doctorates she's um, studied Chinese medicine for 20 years. She was a um, metaphysical teacher for a, a long part of her career. So we are just incredibly blessed to have the level of depth and breadth and wisdom that she brings to this conversation and this work. And if you would like to work with her, the her contact information is up here on the screen. And she has um, an offer for you if you'd like to work with her. Yeah, this, this course, thank you, Simone. This course came out of the questions with people had from the integration and um, comments. Mm -hmm. So I put together a course that's a self-study and based around the, how you can use the earth element to really integrate, so. And if you uh, would like to, if you haven't yet, and you would like to um, join us in Portals of Deconditioning, um, we're offering you an entryway um, to join us for 10% off. And you can receive that gift at bitly.64doors-courses. Um, we would love for you to be a part of our container. And we're just so grateful to our community for everyone who showed up and asked great questions and made great comments. And um, we, this is our series finale of Living the Body Too. And I am so incredibly grateful. Um, Bella, would you like to come in and say anything before we um, sign off? my my beautiful co-creator sister friend you know i think this is a series to come back to and this is what we saw last year when we did living the body one with with tim i mean we still have comments on the youtube channel about that today and i believe like what you were saying simone so much depth and so much width like everything you have that 1648 where i feel like it's so broad it's so deep so i would say this is something to come back to and i even think i will you know, just kind of put it on sometimes when I'm walking outside or something like this is hours of, of something that is that can sink deep into our bodies and that can, you know, naturally kind of shift our behavior in an everyday setting where we are more aware of the form principle, more aware of how you know, we interact with the world through our bodies. So I yeah, definitely something to come back to if you did miss some of the uh, of the of the times that we were here, I would say there's going to be a playlist if it's not all up there um, on Unlock Your Design YouTube. And yeah, use it and, and comment on it too if you have, and give us ideas too if there's anything more. We do occasional like things like this series, but also just master classes in our inner circle. So, and sometimes we all open houses. So I would love also ideas on how to expand, go deeper, go into a niche of, of what's been coming up. Uh, and also just, you know, keep your eyes open because there might be a course, there might be a deepening, it might be something that we're deciding to do out of what this has been. So keep your eyes open and we're always happy when people interact with us. And uh, thank you, Teresa, for doing this with us and for us. You've been with all the presentations every time, you know, so prepared, so much depth. Yeah, I'm, I'm really grateful. I'm very grateful to you. I mean, I started, we started this with gratefulness and it ended with gratefulness. And, Thank you very much. Um, you know, Teresa, one of the things I, I, I love this about Bella, you know, being Bella's sister friend, her teammate, and with Ashley too, you know, we are so aware of what's alive and we can pivot on a dime on air in the middle, you know, and you have been a, an amazing sister friend in this way who, you know, like things came up, people asked questions and the next episode you answered them. We pivoted, the Dalian came up last week. And then, you know, with so much grace and ease, you walk us all through this traditional Chinese, um, 
self-massage medicine connection to the cosmos. I know I'm going to have that, that episode downloaded on replay for me to go through that whole sequence um, was such a magical gift. And then now to understand how it all relates to the bio clock. So, you know, thank you for playing with us in this amazing container. And until we um, co create something else, maybe from this very thing, um, we wish you all well. Take care, everyone. And thanks for joining us with Living the Body Season 2. Take care. <laughs>